Welcome to Charts Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Monday the 3rd of July comes to you from London. And we start by looking at the dollar index. Dollar uh, has been falling a lot the last few months but we are just seeing a little bit of recovery uh, the last couple of days. We're coming off the bottom here. Uh, maybe just finding some support on the, on the long term cloud. Uh, and as we've said in the past, we need to really fall below this 93.40 level to deactivate uh, this downside target of 10% upside at least. Um, but we are just seeing a shortage of medium term upside targets and we do have this downside pressure in the short term. Uh, the euro is actually making a long-term transition now so that uh, long-term chart in the dollar may not hold as a result of this chart where we are just seeing um, a, a move into bullish territory on all three time frames. We've got this new upside target of 119 for the euro that's 4% upside so we are just seeing that and most interestingly of all we've negated this downside target on this thrust column so a move above 116 uh, 117 would really start to it would activate another deactivate another downside target, but we still do have downward pressure in this long-term chart. So still a difficult um, time to call a long-term trend change. And Japanese yen, we're interestingly here. This is dollar strength that we see against the yen. So dollar rising, yen falling. And what we're seeing here is the medium-term chart making a transition, the long-term chart just to, to make a transition and the short-term chart. So what we're seeing is yen weakness, dollar strength, and the dollar is relatively weak. So um, that's really interesting. Uh, taking a look at sterling, sterling is looking quite bullish long-term, just sitting, sitting at this 130 um, mark on the medium-term chart and on the short-term chart as well. A shortage of upside targets on the short-term chart and a lot of downward pressure with still downside targets hanging over us for the um, for the sterling chart so still hard to call if you look at euro sterling here we do have a lot of short-term targets to the downside and we're bearish in the medium and long term although the short-term chart just looking a little bit more bullish and a new upside target of 116.52 that's two percent upside uh, looking at uh, sterling against the Swiss franc, we're seeing much the same picture as we do with the euro. Um, still bearish long and medium term, but the short term chart looking better. Uh, the Australian dollar, again, we're seeing here um, long term bearish sterling against the Aussie, but we are just seeing the medium term um, improving and the short term a little bit better as well. Taking a look at US stock markets, uh, the S&P 500, it fell away quite sharply just in the last hour of trading on Friday. Uh, we do expect US markets to have a bit of a quieter start this week uh, with the 4th of July uh, tomorrow. Uh, I'm guessing the market will be fairly quiet today ahead of that. And we are just seeing here um, that S&P 500 is in, in short-term bearish territory. Um, but the medium and long term trends are intact. The real market is to watch is the NASDAQ. Uh, NASDAQ finding some support on the cloud in the medium term on the price. Uh, the, short t the long term chart still bullish, but the short term chart is bearish. And we did uh, on uh, Friday go below, uh, well, on Thursday went below those lows. And so we are just seeing um, that we are hitting new lows there as well. The Dow. Um, is also looking bearish in the short term and the Russell 2000 is is mixed it's just the broader market is just holding up we need to keep an eye on that Nasdaq chart, chart. looking at the S&P um, e, uh, future we see here that uh, we're bearish below the cloud as well although we're up a quarter of a percent this morning so we may see the market open higher and the Nasdaq e-mini is bearish here as well um, so that's quite quite key but uh, keeping an eye on that today as well up a third of a percent this morning so we hopefully we'll see the market open a bit higher the FTSE 100 index just down slightly bearish in the short term with downside potential of between 1.3 and 1.8 percent with those two targets on the short term chart and the FTSE 250 <coughs> is also bearish below the cloud as well the DAX um, is bearish below the cloud, so we are just seeing in the short term. So we are just seeing markets generally um, selling off at the moment, and the Nikkei 250 up slightly on that weaker yen, um, but uh, still bullish medium and long term. The Hang Seng 
uh, up again slightly, uh, bullish long and medium term, short term very mixed, and the Shanghai um, local market just improving to bullish on the medium term chart. So China is looking better and better. The Sensex also looking good, just seeing here um, a move back above the cloud almost on the um, on the uh, 60 minute chart and up 1% today, so looking stronger. The Australian market is just looking bearish here in the medium and short term. Uh, the long term picture is unchanged. Taking a look at Brent crude, <coughs> we see here that Brent is actually climbing quite significantly on the short term chart. We've really traded off the bottom here. We do have a new upside target of 52.50, 7% upside if that's activated with a move higher. But we do have short and medium term trends hanging over us. We are below the cloud on the medium term chart. And the interesting, we made a lower low uh, and expect to see uh, crude making a lower high before falling away again. We are in that period of the year where prices tend to fall for crude and WTI again strong recovery um, but no clear upside targets here on the short term chart. US net gas back below $3 looking a bit bearish there as well and if we look at uh, copper it's looking bullish above the cloud um, and most commodities we're seeing uh, softs just improving slightly Co coffee getting back above the cloud in the short term uh, wheat has really been the big performer up another two percent this morning so we're seeing um, well soybeans up two percent this morning wheat um, has really um, rocketed um, and we see here just amazing transformation into bullish uh, trends there taking a look at gold Gold is looking quite bearish in the short term. We're seeing a sell-off back into the medium term here. The point and figure charts are actually in bullish mode on the medium and long term, but we do have some downside pressure here on gold, and so that is looking a little bit weaker. We've got 12.18 and 12.12 as targets, so it looks like we're going lower still. Um, and the same with the uh, silver chart, although the, um, the short-term charts in silver we see here is 16.20. Um, so... Gold and silver just looking a bit bearish in the short term, but the long term trends are looking a little bit better. Um, US Treasury yields 2.32%. They're just ticking up, so we are just seeing an improvement in the 10 year yield. Last of all, we look at tech stocks. Apple just holding up. This uh, not making new lows, unlike the market. So Apple holding up. That's a bellwether that's um, looking a little bit better than the market now. It was looking worse, now looking better. Uh, key thing is this 142.50 level, 142 level on Apple. We need to hold that to be sure that we're not seeing a sell-off. Google looking very much like the market making new lows, so that is worrying. And Amazon um, is holding up better than the, the the market in that it's not making those new lows. So Google is the worrying bellwether at the moment. Facebook looking um, still relatively strong. Um, above the cloud on all three time frames and Microsoft did go lower mirroring the Nasdaq really uh, did go lower but uh, is is just back above those low levels so it's really Google is the the stock that's uh, that's looking most worrying out of those at the moment that's it for today until tomorrow happy charting see you then